There you go. There's there you go. There That's we a go. big one. That's what we're looking for. That's a big crappie. Nice fish. Nice fish. Wow. Solid 16, 16 and a half. Yeah, let's weigh him. Let's weigh him. Charlie Bunning. Good morning. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Crappy Kirby, and uh, who's this we got with us? This is Dexter, he's my running partner. Hey, Dexter, how's it going? So, I got to meet you, uh, let's see, two years ago, and I was very excited to do that because you've got such a great reputation, and I know you run with some wild, uh, very popular characters like Mike Baker and, and, and the likes, am I right? Yes. And how long have you been doing the crappie fishing thing? Uh, since the mid 90s. The mid 90s, and what kind of fueled that passion to, to get you started in crappie fishing? Um, actually, a guy that I worked with asked me if I'd want to go crappie fishing with him, and we started, I went with him, started out, and then we started fishing a little uh, telephone company tournaments, and then in about 98, another guy asked me if I'd fish the trail with him, and we started doing that, and then in 03, Travis and I started fishing together when he came back in college, and then 05, we won our first national champion. And from there, here we are. Man, I'm so honored to be fishing with you, a national champion. And it's so great to fish with people that, that know what they're doing and have experience, you know yeah. what I mean? So, looks like we've got an incredible boat here with uh, all the accessories. That's a huge engine. What is this, a Ranger? Yes. Absolutely beautiful, and of course, uh, the staple of any good crappie fisherman on the planet is that Garmin Live Scope. How do you like that? I, I love my Live Scope. I'm, you know, forever. We cut cut our bread on uh, in 07 when they come out with uh, Hummingbird side imaging. Uh -huh. uh, we was the first ones to have that, so that really boosted us up as far as Travis knowing how to use it and operate it. We won a one, you know, we won a lot of tournaments in 07 to uh, like 010 in those three or four years and because of it well now that the garment comes out it's the next step level above that and uh it's been a learning curve for me our our uh, winnings has not been real good since 17. yeah uh because of the people that are very good with life school. who are fluent with it yeah i'm uh <clears throat> but the funny thing is if you don't have that side imaging <clears throat> you're almost kind of throwing darts in the dark to find those brush piles it's kind of like finding a needle in a haystack yes now i know that you know you can see you know trees that are above the surface but i rely still heavily on my side imaging i mark them and then i go back with the garmin live scope yes. is that what you do yes we do yeah, yeah we uh we our hummingbird side imaging is uh been our bread and butter you know like i said we've won three national championships and it wouldn't it wasn't for them we wouldn't have done it yeah yeah you well know, so uh, congratulations, man, and, and I'm very excited. What are we going to be doing today? We're going to be single Poland. Uh, we're going to be uh, hopefully be able to catch some uh, shooting for them. Uh -huh. uh, yesterday, I caught a few uh, that, that was actually casting to them and dragging it across. So we're going to do some of that, and then we're going to uh, use our sticks and drop it dead on their head and, and hold her still and All right. see if we can catch them. All <laughs> right, the B&M stick. I'm, uh, I did a show recently with Mike. Baker, yes. who was very fluent with that stick, and I know you and him are not only good friends but neighbors. He was telling yeah, me, yes, at our campground yeah. right next door. Yes. Man, I bet that gets pretty wild. Two of the best fishermen on the planet living uh, next to there's, there's a lot of other good fishermen in there, also. So. Are there? Yes. Oh man, so well, we are at a lake, uh, Truman Lake, which, in my opinion, was probably designed by a crappie fisherman or possibly a boat repairman. Am I yes, right? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> probably more lower units get store from this lake than any lake in the country. There is a lot of structure for these crappie to uh, hide and uh, I'm ready to get out there. What about you, man? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thank you so much, Charlie Bunning. Good to see you, my friend, and, and Dexter as well.
Hey, is that Mike Baker catching fish over there? Nice. Truman, obviously a, a, a hot spot for crappie fishermen and a friendly lake as well. Am yes. I right? Yes. <laughs> it's cool. So how many how many tournaments uh, have we uh, participated on in a guesstimate? Yeah, last year I fished twenty tournaments. Twenty tournaments. Yes. With twenty tournaments. With the Crappie Master ACT yeah. and uh, Missouri State Crappie Master, yeah, and then the uh, Truman Series. Now, where do you live exactly? In Jefferson City. Jefferson City. Okay, so that's towards Columbia, right? Yeah. How, how long does it take you to get the, here from there? About two hours. About two hours. But well worth the drive. Oh yeah. Well, and we got it camper yeah. over at Barry Bend, so where Mike's got his now, and yeah, Mike come up with me, and it didn't take him long, he decided he wanted to be on Truman Lake. Yeah. Hey, Mike. I'm Kirby Ham. I'm a big, big fan of the Crappie Masters tournaments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're having a good time. We just got out here. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> he said you'll boat hog me. <laughs> nice, nice. There you go, bye. Good German fish. That's a good German fish. Bam. Look at that. What is that? 14 and a half? So probably let's look at. Okay. Let's scale it out. Maybe good. Ooh boy, that felt good on that uh, B and M super stick. Look at that tank. It's amazing what you can learn from this uh, live scope, though, isn't it? Oh, it's... You thought you knew crappie fishing until that came out, huh? Well, you know, it's like Tim wrote a book on Travis and I and 100 techniques of yeah. crappie fishing. And, you know, they all still apply. Yeah. But it's what, what you think you know, you really don't. And you learn so much more. Yes. It's, you're constantly learning. It just amazes me the difference the way a fish reacts during the day and during uh, the uh, from day to day. I mean, what you find pre-fishing, if you go pre-fishing on the week before for a tournament, for yeah. a tournament, you're just totally they're totally changed usually by tournament day. Huh. There looks like a pretty good one out there in open water. Done, <laughs> You've done a very good job of that. <laughs> what would be a good tip you could give to a person that's first time going out on the tournament trail? What would what would be something that you've learned along your 500 plus tournaments? You think? Uh, probably not that many, not but 300. Uh, possibly. Possibly. No, not even that. Cause you figure we've been we didn't fish them. That sucker either went after it or where he run from it. See, there he goes. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know, I have to think about that. What would be the first bit of advice you'd say? Maybe carry a spare trolling motor? <laughs> no, um, probably try to find, you know, do his research what part of the lake is holding the best fish. Uh -huh. to, you know, because it's like this lake. Yeah. We can go down by the dam and catch our lemon in two to three hours. Yeah. But you're not going to catch quality fish that's going to win a tournament. Right. We're stocking big bucks. Yes. We're not shooting dead. But no, I think the main one tip is figure out where the big fish are. Uh -huh. And you can do that by going online, seeing where all the tournaments, all the different tournaments trail that's been there. Right. You know, anything that's won on there. In the past. In the past. And most of the time, it's going to tell you exactly Ooh, where. Ooh, there's a big one out there. See him? Yeah. Well, right on top of that stick. How, uh, on your guide, how, uh, how many, do you do very many trips? Yeah. Oh, big old guy. Uh, usually about three a week. That's pretty good. Yeah. Nice fish, Charlie. Oh, man. <laughs> this is fun, is it not? You bet. Man, this has been a good time. And uh, I can't wait to uh, see how well you do on the tournament trail with Travis, right? Yes. That's who you're fishing with? Yes. So I think this year, you know, everybody's, everybody that's given seminars is talking about live scope. But I think I'm going to try to the, oh, diff yeah. the different way to rig menace. Oh uh, yeah. Nobody does that. How do you? Oh, he's following my thing right now. He, he turned and followed it for a brief second. How do you like to rig your menace? Depends on what I'm doing. Yeah. What's it? Well, let's break it down. Well, you know, originally when I was strolling all the time, uh -huh. I wanted to hook them right through the lips. Right. To give that fish the most able to do swim. Yeah. You know, what they're used to. They mess with the swimming mechanisms. And so that's the way that I rig forever. Well, when I started uh, single pulling all the time again, uh, that's the way that I started rigging my minutes. Okay. Well then, I started uh, just sticking it through the head. Uh -huh. And so now, I'll take these hooks, the these two odd hooks on the uh, Wacom yeah. series, and I string that minna down through the body and come out by the tail. Yeah. And a dead minna, throwing it out there like we're doing here, they're gonna hit, they hit it just like a live minute. Really? And I, if I'm sitting out here corking, uh -huh. I'm gonna either, I, if you hook it in a dorsal fin, uh -huh. and let that thing wobble, yeah, there, those fish hit that reaction. Okay. So, you know, and all the way, and I've hooked them in the bottom where I turn them upside down, and it gives them another Action. Oh yeah, because they're trying to turn themselves right side up. Right, exactly. So different techniques for rigging minnows at different times. Yes, yeah. exactly. So muddy water baits, have you for familiar with them? No, but boy they sure do smell good. Making me crave Italian food. <laughs> That's <laughs> so what is that, garlic? Yes. Yeah? Well, that's my uh, son's business. Oh, okay. How many kids you got? Two. Two. Boy, girl, boy. A girl, boy. Yeah. And. Uh, How old are they now? Uh, Travis is 41, and Angie is 45. What do you think it is that drives us to do this? Is it just the spirit of competition? Is it uh, the the meat meat gatherer? You know, caveman instinct. What is it? You think? I think it's the competition. I mean, for me to be tournament fishing, you know, it's, yeah. When I was young, I played basketball. I played, you know, traveling baseball. Then I played softball, and. 
now I fish. Yeah. You know, and, and to me, it's every day, I can come out here and spend all day trying to catch fish, and it's the challenge to be able to catch them. Yeah. Now with- Oh, look at that. I'm right on this fish one here. A little under. Got up against that tree. Oh, I'm spooking him. Got him. Oh, he's a nice one. There you go. Oh, almost had him. Gotta learn how to do the stick. There we go. Teamwork, baby. <laughs> Teamwork, baby. Not only on the stick, yeah. you caught him on a muddy water bait on the Wacom Series head. Hey, look at you. You got the you got the <laughs> lingo down. That's your son's company, right? Yes, and, yeah. and him and I are together on the jig heads. Yeah. It, I think we're the only jig head out there that's got glow eyes on it. Okay, all right. And uh, Since and, you're the owner of the company, you probably give me a few of those. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good fish. Good job. Thanks, man. Thanks. See, they're starting to bite. Now we're having fun now, baby. Yeah, see, yeah, that one. That one there was what I love. It. Oh, 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 look at that one. There you go. Hold on, hold on. That's real close to us, isn't it? It's 10 feet out. There you go. Oh, I gotta go a little further. More for duck season. There sure are not many ducks flying. Well, we could be in t shirts and a shorts, and it's the middle of December. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true, too. I'm gonna have to take some of these clothes off. It's hot. Getting hot. But that boat ride was a little chilly. Yes, it was. Good, good thing you had a uh, long haired Dotson, because I don't think yeah. short haired Dotson would survive a boat ride like that. I was like, this is... I know she took her jacket off, but he sure like, snuggled up on it. Yeah, like, it was a little cold. That is a cool dog, Dexter. Yeah, there's a long story behind Dexter. Dexter, uh, we had a chase, was our dog that we had prior to which actually become his daddy and one of our neighbors down the campground liked uh, Chase so well that they wanted puppies out of him so then we let him run loose all the time so when their dog come in heat yeah. they uh, let it run loose and they got so they told us later that you know the Dexter was the daddy it's going to be the litter of puppies so <laughs> I said well you know that the, the male gets the pick of the litter <laughs> you know, so it uh, we laughed about it, and uh, uh, she the dog had the puppies, well, it only had one. Oh no! So about six months later, she calls me and says that their dog is allergic to Dexter. Not their dog, their son is allergic to Dexter. Oh! So I don't know if we wanted her. So him so we went and picked him up yeah. and his that connie i was out of town and uh connie let him out of the house at night and he comes back to the house just screaming and uh the daddy was gone we think an owl actually picked him up out of our front yard really and uh so this one has become real special to me you know with the, everything about him yeah his uh his daddy was would sit and lay up on the trolling motor yeah. and watch my trolling rigs. Really? And people would tell Travis when he got there to fish, well, your dad's on big fish. Because he would actually, when the, when the tip of that pole would go down, uh -huh. he would bark. The dog would. And if it was a big fish, he just went crazy. Really? And uh, it was. <laughs> you can't train a dog to do that. Oh, no, but it, I mean, he would lay right there on the trolling motor the whole time that I was trolling. That's funny. But Dexter don't do that, but Dexter goes everywhere with me and he's kind of a daddy's dog. <laughs> All right. I got a bird dog named Deej that uh, is very much the the same way and definitely a, a member of the family, wouldn't you say Dexter yes, is? Yes, definitely. Yeah.
three pounder. Yep. <laughs> There he is. That's a nice one, too. Nice fish. And there's three more, Charlie. I see him swimming around down in there. You see that? Yep. Good job. Okay, man, we're on to something here. Oh, he's coming on it. You Where got it. Oh, oh, dude, that's another big one. Yeah, it was. That's what you call not setting the hook when he bites. Oh, man. He took that jig and took it straight up. Yeah, that, he was aggressive. Yes, he was. He was aggressive. That was a big one. That was another yeah. 14, 15 inch crappie. I saw him. He got him to the water. We'll count. Say hi. Howdy from Truman Lake. Howdy from Truman Lake. I'm fishing with uh, Charlie Bunting and uh, another celebrity crappie man, Matt Rogers, comes by. and. Uh, we have ran into quite a few. We saw Mike Valentine, Mike Baker. Who else have we met so far? Uh, Billy Don Service, uh, Craig Hansen. I think that's it. Yeah, just an incredible friendly lake. I mean, they're sharing spots. They're talking about where they're biting. And uh, that's a real tip of the hat to Truman Lake, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Not every fishery is that way. Sometimes there's places that have, you know, real attitudes on the water and, hey, you're fishing too close, that sort of stuff. But it seems like a real family structure going on over here. Yeah, just about everybody's really friendly. I ran into Kyler Beckman. He's a, he's a guide here on the lake. Uh, I seen a guy named Noel Fernandez, which is a legend on the lake, and then another legend, which is Alan Morgan. They uh, they used to fish a lot of tournaments together, but they, they've gotten a little older and they've kind of retired out of fishing tournaments. But uh, just about every day you're going to see. Yeah. I, I know somebody that was from Southern Illinois that was over here a week ago, you know, and uh, they messaged me and asked me a few questions about the lake, and I, I told them, you know, cut some areas to try to focus on the bite on the lakes. Yeah, up here where we're at, where the bigger fish live, it's a little more finicky. But where uh, where the numbers are and where great size fish are, you know, the, the bites the bites great. Um, a lot of people fish out of bucks all this time of year. Uh, bucks all can be great, uh, but uh, you know, you want to get away from the people instead of seeing them all. You can go to the Osage Arm, you might not see a soul. Yeah. Um, the Grand Arm is a really really popular arm that uh, most of the people fish. There's uh, some really really big fish that get caught on the. Uh, the Osage arm though, and yeah. the Tommy arm is even really good. A little closer to Kansas City area is the um, Tebow arm, yeah. Windsor Crossing. Well, that, that place gets just just full of fish. Um, but I generally, from where I live, I fish Stockton Lake a lot too. Uh -huh. And uh, it's kind of fun to be in this area because we've got Stockton Lake, Palm de Terre, and Truman. And Lake of the Ozarks if you want to drive a little ways, but uh, just three total different fisheries. You know, one's just plentiful with black crappie. We got black and white crappie here and black and white crappie in Stockton. But a big difference is once you can see six inches, another one you can see six feet. Yeah. Um, the bite on that lake's getting ready to get really, really good. And, uh, nice. That'll be, that, that's probably my favorite bite of the year. Favorite huh. place to fish probably in the winter too. Let me ask you a couple questions. Uh, first off, how old are you? I'm 23. 23. Now let me ask you something. You're not the typical 23-year-old in this day and age. Would you agree with that? Oh, to an extent. I still play some video games and stuff like that. But uh, my main focus in life is, you know, fishing and hunting. Yeah. I now, made a I made a career out of it and made a living out of fishing for about three years now. Most people that I've met in the crappie game um, tend to, you know, kind of, you know, be a little older. Uh, yeah. But but now with the uh, technology catching up to where it is basically a video game, you're seeing younger and younger people entering uh, the sport of crappie fishing and just becoming ate up with it as we oh, say. Oh yeah, it's a it's a it's it's getting very popular. A big a big step in it will be when we decide people decide to start calling them sport fish instead of pan fish. And they're starting to be that way. You know, they're turning into a sport fish. It's, it's, uh, the tournaments are growing, there's more clubs starting and uh, more opportunity for people to get into it. Now, other electronic companies released similar stuff to what uh, Garmin had had out for a while, which was making it just crazy competitive. Yeah. So it's just going to get more competitive. And it's, it's a little bit more uh, affordable of a, of a 
you know, fishing species, you know, bass, sometimes lures are 25 and $30. Oh, yeah, that's that's cheap. I know guys yeah. that throw $70 crankbaits here on Truman in the stumps of all places. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, it's, you know, you can go to, you don't have to have all the electronics either. You can go to, you know, a great place as Everhart's here in Clinton, Missouri. You can go in there with a $100 bill, and you can get everything you need to catch a crappie any time of the year. From the bank. You don't From even need bank. a boat. Oh, yeah. I, I, could, I could take a... Ten places probably right now I could take a rod and go catch fish off the bank yeah. you know that's just one of the things where you can make it work if you're gonna fish from the bank looking at mapping it's the same scenario you, know, you can find places to catch them yeah. um, especially on a lake like this it's so big yeah it's got so many creeks and stuff on it that you could try you can you can try a lot of things um, we're, we live in a pretty diverse area. We got, you know, several different lakes. I know guys that catch fish off of the yeah. bank on Palm de Terre Lake all, all year. How many uh, friends your age are ate up with it like you are? How many people do you know? I can think of out of the country and crappie fishing right now, which is growing, but I can think of about maybe 10 10 yeah. that are in there around this area some are younger yeah you're kind of a unicorn and it's definitely a, a pleasure to meet you because uh big fan you got a lot of talent and a lot of fun times ahead of you yeah yeah i uh, i look forward to the 2021 season i'm gonna fish several trails i'm gonna fish the crop usa several acts and then a lot of the a lot of all of them i'm gonna try to make them all work if i can yeah. Well, uh, good luck to you, man. You're going to have a tough time beating this guy right here, Charlie Button. Charlie what Button's got a lot to go for you. to be tough, young man. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely a lot of great camaraderie and respect between everybody here at Truman, which is such a, a wonderful thing uh, to help promote the sport of crop efficiency. So, Matt, it's such a pleasure to run into you today. Thank that you. It's good to meet you. And, yeah. And shout out to all your viewers. Oh, yeah. Thank you, you man. Keep going. <laughs> we appreciate it, man. <laughs> I saw you put another... Uh, video out recently. I did. Yeah. Just yesterday. Oh, I, 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 I was busy trying to get all the batteries charged so I didn't have a chance to watch it, but I'm going to get on it. It's, uh, yeah, I was going to Lake Delta. Yeah. Hey, I like that recipe. Yeah. Yeah. It, it tastes pretty good. It was so simple and so tasty. It, it was like restaurant grade. What about you, man? What's your favorite way to fry these fish or cook them? How do you like to eat them? <laughs> I cheat. I use Andy's. Andy's? That's Andy's. that's what Mike was using. Yeah, that's that's the way we cook every usually every Friday night. Every Friday night. There you go. There you go. There that's we a go. Big one. That's what we're looking for. That's a big cropping. Nice fish. Nice fish. Solid 16, 16 and a half? Yeah, let's weigh him. Let's right. weigh him? Yeah, 191. Oh, 190. Oh, 191. Yeah, almost a two pound crappie. So, uh, I want to see how many inches that is. That's what we're coming for. That's a, that is a, that's a crappie that goes on a wall. What is that, 16 and a half? But look at the back and the belly on this fish. A beautiful Truman Lake crappie. And we're going to put him back in the water for we can have, he can make little ones and we can catch him again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And uh, man, I can't thank you enough for this. This has been a great time. We're going to go have a Mexican dinner in Clinton. That's pretty close to Truman. Sound yes. good? Yes. All right. And uh, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit likes, uh, and check out Charlie Bunting on the 2021 tournament trail where... Wherever it may be. We know right. Crappie Masters is right. on. So and start out in Florida and end yeah. up in Louisiana. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see you on the American Crappie Trail as well. That's, yes. a, that's a fun group as well. Yes. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Fish, Eat, Live. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell, and giving us a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out all the products used in the video and leave your comments and questions in the description area below. A special thank you to our main sponsors, B&M Poles and Crappie Magnets. We'll see you back here next week, same time, for another great episode of Fish, Eat, Live.